It is absolutely crucial that a team that wins as much as the Kansas City Chiefs do, that a team that wins as deep into the playoffs and as many Super Bowls as the Kansas City Chiefs have, it is crucial that that team draft well and do well in the post-draft process in order for them to continue their reign of success. Everyone knows that the NFL punishes success to a certain extent with the fact that you are pushed further and further down the draft the more games that you win. And indeed, if you win the Super Bowl, whatever was your record during the regular season, you are selecting last in the first round, and every consequent round, with the exception of compensatory picks. The Chiefs have done so, and I think they may have done so yet again. I will start this off by a reminder from one of the greatest general managers ever, to be in the NFL. He was also a great player. Ozzie Newsome, who was the longtime general manager of the Baltimore Ravens, he stated that what you really want to do with every draft is draft three starters. If you can draft three starters every year, you've got an entire side of the ball taken care of under rookie contracts. A little bit more than that, actually, because three, six, nine, twelve, you would have. 12 starters in four seasons, uh, rookie contracts being four years long, five for first rounders, but roughly 12 starters every four years that you would have drafted. And then you only have 10 spots that you have to figure out for starters from free agents, from uh, UDFA players, from players that are signing their second contract with your club, etc., etc. It worked out well, very well for Ozzy Newsom. Ozzy Newsom drafted 18 Pro Bowlers during his reign in Baltimore. Now, 16 of those came in the first, I believe, 12 years that he was doing that, and the the next few years were not as strong for Ozzy Newsom, but. That's that's a pretty good record there. Uh, Veach, if we are contrasting... So the reason I'm talking about this is we're going to get into this year's draft. I don't want to bury the lead too terribly much, but I want to set the table for this. Veach, right now, technically has three uh, drafted pro bowlers for the Kansas City Chiefs. Nicole Hardman, Creed Humphrey, and Nick Bolton. But technically, he has four because Tommy Townsend was a UDFA after the or before the 2020 season. No, after the 2020s. During the 2020 draft, before the 2020 season. Um, now, here's the thing. If we are looking at the successes that Brett Veach has had so far, we only have to look at what was an incredible 2022 draft to see what this front office is of what this front office is capable and why we have so much reason so many reasons to be uh, excited and hopeful here in Kansas City let's look at that 2022 NFL draft which to my estimation contains out of 10 players but one confirmed bust to this point. The first pick he made was Trent McDuffie, who has already proven himself to be an all-pro and has 27 starts in the NFL. The next pick was George Karloftis. Now, the reason George Karloftis has 33 starts to Trent McDuffie's 27, Trent McDuffie started his NFL career on the injured list. Sky Moore, say what you will about him, I don't think it is safe to consider a player a bust who through two seasons has 11 starts and meaningful contributions to the offense. And the fourth pick from that draft, Brian Cook, has 13 starts. It would be many more if not for an injury. Leo Chanel listed with 18 starts, a surprisingly high number uh, to, to my estimation because we have not seen as much Leo Chanel as I believe we will. Joshua Williams already has six starts to his name, but many more snaps than simply six starts would lead you to believe. Darian Kennard, the aforementioned bust, at least as far as his Kansas City career, 
was concerned. Jalen Watson already has eight starts for the Kansas City Chiefs, though, again, many more snaps than you would expect from a guy who has only eight starts and was drafted in the seventh round. Isaiah Pacheco, the next seventh rounder we have to talk about, has 24 starts through his NFL career to date. And Naze Johnson, ooh, no, I messed that up. Naze Johnson has zero starts, though he has a little bit of special teams experience as a rookie. He spent all last year injured, and he looks primed to have some playing time, if not starts, this season. That is, in one draft, 140 starts through two seasons of football, not including playoffs, not including Super Bowls. That is absolutely insane. That is the entire class averaging seven starts per season. That That is insane. And that has been held back by injury. Imagine if these guys had been healthy. Just absolutely insane. And when you look at it right now for this defense, Trent McDuffie is a starter at cornerback, Joshua Williams, Jalen Watson, and Nazi Johnson are all competing for the other starting cornerback position. So you're likely to, between those four, have cornerback one, two, and probably three, if not one, two, three, and four, And you have a start. Why does it keep doing this? And you have a starting safety from that same draft. And if you want to go a little bit deeper than that, you have a starting linebacker and a starting defensive end among the bunch. So an absolutely insane draft class from Brett Veach, which brings us to the promising appearance of this, the 2024 NFL draft class. Now, does it look to be as fruitful as the 2022 class? I would not suggest so. They didn't have 10 picks. It looks like they may have. So not listed on this list that we're going to get into here, Kamal Haddon and CJ Hansen. Neither of these players has really shown much so far through the first two preseason games of their entire career, right? So not the biggest sin. That said, I will suggest that Kamal Haddon has appeared lost on the depth chart, perhaps not the biggest sin when you're talking about a cornerback room for the Kansas City Chiefs that includes players that would start on many teams, many players that would start on many teams throughout the NFL. And C.J. Hansen is getting second team reps in preseason games for the Kansas City Chiefs. So I don't think it's necessary to write him off just yet. It might be that he does ascend through the depth chart and end up finding his way onto the field for the Chiefs eventually, possibly even as a starter, but even in the seventh round to be getting quality depth on the offensive line is a pretty good thing. Is it possible that either Kamal Haddon or C.J. Hansen earn starts during their career here in the in at in Kansas City? Yeah, absolutely, it is. I don't see either of them contributing much, if at all, during their rookie seasons, so they will not be on the list for this uh, video. First off, first pick. Xavier Worthy for the Kansas City Chiefs, 5'11", 165 pounds, ran the fastest 40 in the history of the NFL Combine. I don't know if you've heard that. At 4-2-1 with a 1-4-9 40-yard dash, absolutely elite, but not as elite as the 40. He had a 41-inch vertical and a 10-foot, 11-inch broad jump. Very good numbers. But will he start for the Kansas City Chiefs this season? I think the odds are he gets 17 starts. I think that Rashi Rice started eight games as a rookie last year. Xavier Worthy looks to be a more prevalent part of this offense early in this preseason than Rashi Rice did at this point last season. Rashi Rice, I I believe Xavier Worthy will be pressed onto the field in week one and week two if those are the games that Hollywood Brown misses. He will be pressed into action 
week three, week four, if Hollywood Brown misses that much time, there are rumors that this could be a six to eight week ordeal for Hollywood Brown here in Kansas City. If that is the case, Xavier Worthy will absolutely, in my opinion, be counted among the starters on the offense. And that would be to the point where if you're looking at four, five, six weeks into the season, I don't see Justin Watson getting the starting nod over Xavier Worthy. I think that perhaps earlier in the season there is a threat of that when you take into account the fact that Justin Watson knows everything that's going to happen on the football field. Xavier Worthy still a little raw. It might... <clears throat> pardon me, behoove the Chiefs not to give him the quote-unquote start that early in the year. However, with Hollywood Brown out, I think I think Xavier Worthy being pressed into action makes it unlikely that when Hollywood Brown returns to the lineup, um, Justin Watson or anyone else in that wide receiver room presses him out of the top three, which are probably all going to be, list, be listed as starters for the Kansas City Chiefs. You have five linemen, one quarterback, one running back, one tight end, three wide receiver spots on the starting lineup. And I think Xavier Worthy will be listed among them. I think he starts probably, barring injury, 17 games as a rookie for the Kansas City Chiefs. Moving on to the second round pick, Kingsley Suomataia. Six foot five, 326 pounds, 34 and a half inch arms, a 504 40 yard dash. Normally, you wouldn't talk too much about a 40 yard dash when you're talking about or praising an offensive lineman. I think that it is necessary when it's right around that 5 0 mark or below, especially when you're considering the fact that Kingsley Suomataia is not a six foot. Four, 301 pound guy. He's 6'5, 326. This is a very large human being. Running that 504 is impressive for his size. He also had 31 bench press reps with 225 pounds on those 34 and a half inch arms. He is a big, strong, athletic guy. When you look at, at offensive linemen for the Chiefs in the past few seasons, Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith both started 17 games as a rookie, as rookies, I should say, in 2022. Um, or 2021, was it? 2022 was this class? No, that was 20. Anyway, whatever it was, whenever it was, Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith both had 17 starts during their rookie years. And if Kingsley can stay healthy, I don't think there's any way he ends up being taken off the field. Even if, so right now, Wanya Morris and Jawan Taylor are both showing uh, concerning signs because they are injured and not on the football field. Say both of them come back tomorrow, I don't think Kingsley Suomataia is the third tackle among them. If Jawan Taylor's spot, so here's the thing. Wanye Morris comes back, all of a sudden he's superhuman, and everybody says, oh my goodness, this is the left tackle for the Kansas City Chiefs. Phenomenal. What an amazing uh, young man that Wanye Morris has become during his injury absence. He has to be a left tackle. All of a sudden, he has the most dramatic kick step in the NFL. Okay, fine. Granted. He's your left tackle, Wanye Morris, back and a better man than ever. Then I think you end up having Kingsley Sumataia on that right side. I really do. I don't think that Jawan Taylor has done or shown anything in his time here in Kansas City to make him irreplaceable, regardless of what the Kansas City Chiefs are paying him. And if you have the two young guys who come out and end up being better than Jawan Mo Jaw Taylor, I think you see them on the field. All of that said, all of that said to say, I think Kingsley Sumataia racks up 17 starts here in his rookie season. The Chiefs have shown that they will start players, they will start players on the offensive line from week one, snap one, if it is necessary to the team's success. Andy Reid not afraid to pull that trigger, and I think Kingsley Suomataia is going to force the hand. Jaden Hicks is the, the third and final player that I think is 
primed for multiple starts here in his rookie season. Jaden Hicks goes six foot two, 211 pounds, a 4.4940. All of those. So a big safety with good speed, not great speed, but good speed. A 37 and a half inch vertical is a good number. A 6883 cone drill is in the 70th percentile. He is not an athletic marvel. He does not have to be. It turns out he's very good at the sport of football. If you compare this to Chamari Connor and Brian Cook, Chamari Connor started seven games last season. Brian Cook started one game in 2022. Jaden Hicks might start all 17 games here in 2024 if he remains healthy. I think that what he has shown in camp what he has shown in the preseason means that even if there are holes in his game, even if there are mistakes that he is bound to make by factor of being a rookie, you roll that dice, you might have an absolute superstar on your hands in Jaden Hicks. You might have an absolute bona fide all-pro on your hands in Jaden Hicks. You hate to call that out so early. You hate to say that without taking a single snap in the preseason or in the regular season. But if you were to judge by the preseason, which you shouldn't do, but this is what you would want to see from a guy. If he was going to be an all pro type player, this is what you would want to see. This is what you would hope to see. You have seen it. So, Uh, In fact, you couldn't ask to see much more than you have seen from Jaden Hicks. So I think you have here in these three selections for the Kansas City Chiefs, players that are likely to start all season long, so long as they are able to stay healthy. When you go back to that 2022 class, George Karloftis started his entire rookie season. I believe that is it. Remember, Isaiah Pacheco was in that position battle with CEH for most of his rookie season. I think it was like week 10 that he really took the reins from uh, Clyde Edwards-Elair of his rookie season. So as good as this class is, and look, Trent McDuffie would have started all 17 games, so you should have given, you should have seen Trent McDuffie and George Karloftis both with 17 starts as rookies. If you go back to 2021, You had Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith start all season. I believe Nick Bolton missed a couple, but would have been. So he's the beginning of his rookie year. He was pressed into action because of injury, I believe, not suspension. And then he never really gave back the reins of starting middle linebacker. So 2021, you had three bona fide starters come out as rookies. 2022, basically two as rookies. In 2024, you might be looking at four, three guys, Jaden Hicks, Kingsley Suomataya, and Xavier Worthy, who are absolutely going to be week one, game one starters, I believe, for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and then we have the guys who are likely to contribute during their rookie season. Jared Wiley, six foot six, two hundred and forty nine pounds, ran a four six two forty yard dash with a thirty seven inch vertical and a nine foot ten inch broad jump. These are good numbers for a tight end. If you look back to twenty twenty one, Noah Gray had one start during that season. Uh, I think Wiley is likely to get a couple quote unquote starts, whether that is through. Um, two tight ends being listed as starters, whether that is through Travis Kelsey being sat a game, the the final week of the season is likely to be either completely necessary or completely throwaway. If it is completely throwaway for the Kansas City Chiefs, as it has been several times in the past, you were likely, in my opinion, to see Jared Wiley get the starting nod. I believe Jared Wiley is going to uh, assume the number two tight end position during the course of this season, but whether he gets one start, zero starts, two starts, doesn't matter. He's likely, in my opinion, to contribute far more than Noah Gray's seven receptions on 10 targets, 36 yards, and one touchdown as a rookie. If he can do that, it is another win for this rookie class. If he can do that, 
it is going to mean W's in the column for the Kansas, or check marks in the W column for the Kansas City Chiefs. Finally, the last uh, draft pick that I want to talk about here is Hunter Norzad. Now, during the after the first preseason game, I said that the Hunter Norzad slash Chuck Godrick combination was absolutely disastrous. I said I couldn't tell exactly what was going on there. It was a blur to me. I didn't know what the responsibilities were, what the defense was, right? I am not the offensive line guru. I have no real way of reading that uh, to some extent. I have a little bit of knowledge there, cursory knowledge of that, but not what I would need to have diagnosed what was going on on that side of the line, it turns out, in week two of the preseason with Hunter Norzad moving into center, I believe, for all of his reps, if I'm not mistaken, and Chuck Godrick being out there looking like a turnstile but confused. Yeah, that might have been not a Hunter Norzad problem. Norzad goes six foot three, three hundred and seventeen pounds, with thirty three and one quarter or thirty three and one eighth inch arms. Pretty good for a center. Ten and ten, ten and three quarters inch hands. Those are big hands. Also, twenty seven reps on the bench press with two hundred and twenty five pounds. It is unlikely for Hunter Norzad, in my opinion, to start at all as a rookie, but even providing rotation would be massive for a team whose offensive linemen regularly play 1,000 plus snaps during a season slash postseason, and that would allow the team flexibility with the Trey Smith, Creed Humphrey, and Joe Tooney contracts coming up as they are. So Hunter Nurzad ascending on this roster to back up this season and possibly starter in the future it would be massive for this team. If it allows the Chiefs to part ways with the Joe Tooney contract, they could keep, I believe, both Trey Smith and Creed Humphrey. Joe Tooney is a very good offensive guard. Is Joe Tooney enough to make up for losing both Creed Humphrey and Trey Smith? Or... Does Hunter Nurzad allow you the opportunity to keep Joe Tooney on his current contract, pay either Trey Smith or Creed Humphrey, and then plug Hunter Nurzad into that next opening? Whatever it is, whatever the correct answer is, I, I trust Brett Veach and staff to get there, but whatever the answer is, you now have the flexibility to do said thing. Now, The main thrust of this video, the Chiefs look to have drafted, look as if they have drafted, three starters in this draft. You've got a wide receiver in Xavier Worthy. You've got an offensive lineman, an important offensive lineman, a, an offensive line position that you haven't really been able to figure out during the entire duration of the Brett Veach general managership for the Kansas City Chiefs because you have not had a top 10 selection. Left tackles go very early. Left tackles, if you get them through free agency, are very expensive. You don't have that money. You are, you are paying the best quarterback in the NFL, the best tight end possibly in history, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Whatever that divvying up of that money is, it's difficult to find a left tackle. You might have solved that problem. And then you have a safety who looks to me to be the next great safety in Kansas City. A long line of good safeties in Kansas City, but I think Jaden Hicks might be the next one. Could this draft be the cornerstone of, an, of the continuation of the dynasty here in Kansas City? Well, two of these guys are direct help for Patrick Mahomes. Kingsley Sumataya is going to give him the time to throw the ball. Xavier Worthy, if you give if you give him four seconds, is 40 yards downfield. So that speaks volumes for the for the offense's ability to take the next step forward in progressing slash staying very good. The safety. So you have two problems there that the Chiefs have had difficulty solving. Wide receiver, very fickle position in the NFL, left tackle, 
very expensive, rare position in the NFL. It's rare to find a guy that is a true, genuine left tackle. You seem to have maybe solved those problems. And then you have solved possibly one of the one of the most common questions for this defense, safety. The Kansas City Chiefs love to bring in safeties slash defensive backs slash cornerbacks. If you have got if you've gotten all pro and Trent McDuffie already on the team, and you add what looks to me to be a potential all pro in Jaden Hicks, having an all pro back seven for the Kansas City Chiefs would be absolutely massive, wouldn't it? So long-standing questions for the offense and defense solved by these three starters in one draft. Absolutely phenomenal. That is what I have for this video. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other Kansas City Chiefs fans. If you find yourself here by chance but not designed, the Kansas City Chiefs are the only thing I talk about on this channel, dropping multiple videos every single week. And I hope to have you back for the next one. So leave a comment letting me know which of these draft picks you think is going to be the best and who's going to be the guy from that bottom four after the starting three that you think is going to contribute the most. My opinion is Jared Wiley.